nice to meet you at the Kotlin Conf. Um, I'm Simon. Uh, I work for JetBrains, and I was the tech lead for K2 Project, also known as Kotlin 2.0. Um, and it's finally ready, released, and well, today I'll tell you the story about it and how it was. But before we start, let me introduce you to two terms that I'll use throughout my talk. It's K2 and K1, meaning the um, compiler and uh, its components of the corresponding version. Um, we use um, we name it that way internally, and it's very convenient, so we'll use it here as well. Um, so, why we even changed Kotlin compiler so significantly that we decided to advance the Kotlin language version? Well, uh, to answer that question, let's get back in time a little. So, when Kotlin 1.2 was released, the Kotlin team was just 19 people, and before that, there, there were even fewer. Um, and because of that, the K1 compiler architecture was meant to be simple. Because when you're working on a new language, you want to, able to, to be able to iterate fast. And in fact, the K1 compiler architecture were based, was based on a prototype that was really good enough to be shipped and released as 1.0. Um, and well, since then, Kotlin became popular. Um, a lot of Kotlin code is being written nowadays and was written since then. Um, some exciting new features were added to the Kotlin. Uh, and not only exciting and new and nice, but also complex, with multi-platform being one of the most complex features in our language. Um, and, well, we kept evolving Kotlin, like the Kotlin language, um, Yet, the architecture stayed the same for quite a long time. And it's not only about architecture, it's not only about features that you put into, but also about the team. And the Kotlin team actually grew. And by the time when we started working on K2, um, the size of the team was already double in size and continued to grow further. And with all that, K1 was a good architecture for Kotlin 1.0 and further, and it served us faithfully um, throughout the years. Yet, um, our architectural goals have changed. We need to be able to evolve the language carefully while adding new features we don't want to break existing. And we want to some new goals we uh, have after that moment. So, um, after all, who likes to work with legacy code, right? It's just much more fun to rewrite everything from scratch. I'm just joking. So um, code needs constant thought out refactoring. And especially when it comes to the platform that everything is built, built, upon, built on, right? Um, otherwise, the conceptual integrity that was put there in place by uh, initial authors quickly disappear. And some weird corner cases begin to pop up. Um, so, who reads the description of talks to choose which one to attend? Um, so, okay, I promise you one thing, to talk what FEAR is. So, FEAR is actually an abbreviation for front-end inter intermediate representation. Um, in fact, it's just a glorified tree that the compiler uses to store the information um, about your program while working uh, on it. And what's more important is front-end. So you see, I'm a little bit of a front-end developer myself, and I can do some Kotlin JS or Kotlin WebAssembly. Um, yet, well, in the compiler world, front-end means different thing. Um, so what the Kotlin compiler is, essentially, is a program that takes some source code, Kotlin source code as input, Java as well, actually, um, and produces some outputs depending on your target platform. Um, but internally, it is split it into two parts that sometimes even so distinct that it runs in different processes, um, the front-end and back-end. And the front-end is a part that's responsible for understanding language and reporting all errors. It runs in your IDE as well. Um, and that part of the compiler 
encodes the very essence of what Kotlin language is. And uh, yeah, um, K2 project was actually about major rework uh, done to the front end because yeah, we keep evolve com uh, we keep to improve our compiler and we did some significant improvements for back end back back then. Um, so and the problem is there is a lot of Kotlin code. Um, let me give you a small example. Um, so imagine you have an API with um, really big API surface, really wide, and is used by millions of apps, different apps by different companies, not, not your own. Um, and now you have to rewrite all that from scratch. And you have documentation, well, old implementation, but still something will break, right? Um, yet, in Kotlin, we have the set of, set of principles called pragmatic evolution. And one of the major principles there is updates should be comfortable. And as Guido Van Rossum, creator of Python, said in his Python 3 retrospective video, compatibility is a king. We in the Kotlin team know that, and we care for it. So let me show you something. Um, I've calculated amount of code um, with, that is written, was written for um, K2 front-end development um, throughout different milestones of the project. And uh, I'm just accounting for the amount of code being there, not accounting for all the uh, changed code, because what it really means is the code that works, not the code that was deleted, right? Um, and another chart, um, amount of effort that went into develop, development of, on the different milestone, milestones. Um, in fact, it is manually approximated amount of man month that went into the development of different milestones. You probably already noticed the difference between those two charts, but let me put it side by side. Um, here you see it more clearly at the more effort we're actually um, towards the end, like t towards the completion of the project. And here's even interesting thing happen. Um, um, during the alpha, when we released K2 for JVM alpha, whatever it means, 75% of code was actually already written, but with only 29% of the effort. So all the later effort went into making uh, it compatible. And how did we test that? Well, um, we can reuse all K1 tests, well, not all, but most, um, K1 tests, because we in intend to keep language the same. Um, yet, it's only a small portion of the test coverage. Um, there are another techniques. Um, Kotlin compiler is written in Kotlin, so uh, we can take the source code of K2, compile it with K1 compiler, and now we have functioning K2 compiler that we can use to compile the source code of K2, and now we build it with itself. And we can now test that artifact. Uh, and the Kotlin compiler is a pretty big project, so it provides a nice way to extend the test coverage uh, and also to test all the things that you are actually working on right now. Um, but it's not enough. So um, throughout the project, we actually, yeah, and another chart here. Um, we, d we actually are increasing the amount of projects that we routinely test um, K2 on. Um, and we took some internal projects, some public projects, as Igor mentioned in, uh, in the keynote, and so on. And in that, we were routinely testing K2 on more than 10 million lines of code, um, like actually commit by commit. Um, and that's still not enough. That's why we had our EAP program early and involved a lot of um, people to the EAP program. And I really want to say thank you for participating in the K2 early access program because it really helps. The more lines of code you test it on, the more bugs is revealed and fixed early. And that leads to another aspect um, of quality, which isn't, isn't the compatibility. 
And in our pragmatic evolution principle set, there is another principle, so-called keep the language modern. And by modern, I'm not meaning that. More like that, small fixes, improvements, and cleanup of corner cases. Because when you rework inside a huge um, set of algorithms, you naturally find them. And let me show you um, one thing. We have a special group in the Kotlin Foundation called Kotlin Language Committee, um, who oversee the changes that we make to the language, like to the corner cases, in order to assess that we don't break things, but actually improve. So let me show you some examples. Um, so here is a function, and there, there is this thing so called smartcast. So compiler knows that we, we did an is check here. And we can call a method. It's correct. Uh, yet let me refactor that a little. So I've introduced a variable. And um, so do you think it should compile? If you think it should compile, raise your hand. OK, so do you think it would compile? So um, in K1, it, it doesn't. In K2, it does. And we did that by reworking our, our data flow engine. So it's just, just better. That's, that's the thing. Uh, another example. So here we just building a list, like any, throwing in any object instance there and calling a method. Um, and it works in prints too here, actually. Um, yet there is an ID warning. Um, there is an explicit type argument that could be removed, right? So let's remove it. So you think it would compile? Raise your hand. OK. So it does not compile in K1. Uh, indeed. But why? Nobody knows, actually. Um, <laughs> and in K2, it just works. Because we fixed that. Uh, it was actually intentional effort. But anyway, it should just work. Why, why would not it? Um, and the third example. So here we're just doing some checks again, checking for different types. And it's something strange happens here. Because I would not expect that to compile, right? So raise your hand if you think it would compile. OK. So uh, in fact, it, <laughs> it compiles in K1. But um, in K2, it is correctly rejected. So it's just an example of, of, of a compiler bug that really, uh, really leads to unsoundness and runtime crash. But sometimes it worked. Um, that's why yeah. we actually fixed it in, in the language, not in the compiler only. Um, and it's much more. There, are a lo there were a lot of problems fixed just by rethinking our approach, just by cleaning up those corner cases and everything, with a really huge help from Kotlin Language Committee group um, that oversees all that effort. Um, so welcome to the Kotlin 2.0. It is ready, released. So upgrade now. And thank you very much for listening. Um, yeah, and a small note. Um, do, please don't forget to vote for the, for the talk on the Kotlin Conf app. Uh, and also for the questions, we don't have much time here on the lightning talk format. So you can try to find me by my orange sweater somewhere on the Kotlin Conf. Uh, yet um, I'm, it's a camouflage to blend in with the carpets, so it will be hard. <laughs> Thank you very much.